So continuing on with rational expressions, we've talked about how to simplify them and how to multiply them. So our next logical process is how to divide rational expressions. Just like the steps of my multiplying were an extension of the steps of my simplifying, the steps of my division are an extension of the steps that we just learned of my multiplication. Look at the last three steps. They are exactly the same. We only have one additional step here, and that is the first step. And this is, if we're ever trying to divide fractions, the saying goes, it's as easy as pi, flip the second fraction and multiply. So we take the reciprocal or the flipped over of the second fraction and we turn it into a multiplication problem. And then we, of course, follow our multiplication steps. So let's see an example of this. And I actually believe that you are well prepared enough to do this on your own. So I suggest that you pause the video and see how far you can get. Since this is a division problem, my first step should be to take the reciprocal of the second fraction and change it into a multiplication problem. And I'm actually going to combine that step with my factoring step. So I'm just going to save some space on my whiteboard here. And you can do the same on your paper at home. So I'm going to make this a multiplication problem and make sure when I'm factoring this second fraction, the bottom moves to the top and the top moves to the bottom. So we're taking the reciprocal of it. Okay, let's go ahead and now move to the factoring part of this. And I typically like to start my top left, but you can factor this in any order. It's in descending order. I have no common factors. I have two terms, and these are both cubes. So I'm going to follow my cube formula. I can write this as x cubed minus 2 cubed. Then that fits into my cube formula wonderfully, where I have a short two-term binomial and a long three-term trinomial. In my binomial, I have x minus 2, exactly what I see without the cubes. In my first place, I have x squared, because x times x squared gives me x cubed. In my last place, I have 2 squared, but I want to write that in the simplified form of 4. Because if I take 2 times 4, I want to get my last term of 8. And in the middle part of my trinomial, I want to multiply my terms. So x times 2 gives me a 2x. Now my signs. Since this problem started out as a subtraction, this is a subtraction, and that opposite sign goes here. And your last sign is always an addition. So we have just followed that cube formula. Now, if you've forgotten how this works, I suggest that you go back and watch the factoring by difference or sums of cubes video. Okay, the bottom. Four minus x squared. The first thing I notice that it's not in typical order. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange it. The negative with the x squared moves to the front and the positive 4 moves to the back. Now I have a negative in the front, which we don't typically like, so I suggest that we're going to factor out that negative. That leaves me with a positive x squared minus 4. That switches both of my signs in that binomial. Now if I look in my binomial, notice I have two terms, which are both squares. So I can factor that as a difference of squares, x plus 2 and x minus 2. But don't forget to copy that negative from step to step. That is something a lot of students do is just forget to copy it down. Okay, so I jumped kind of all over my board here, so let me make sure that we get these steps right. 
I started at the bottom first, which is definitely unusual for me, and then I worked my way back up to what I wanted to focus on. Okay, so let's get rid of all of my scratch work here, which is also something that I don't typically do, but I want you to see a clean slate. So let me now go to my bottom here, and the reason that I'm going to my bottom is remember I have to take the reciprocal of the second fraction. So I'm taking this bottom because that's what's going to move to my top. It is in descending order. I have no common factors. I have three terms of a trinomial, so let me set up my two sets of parentheses. x times x gives me x squared. 3 times 2 gives me 6. And a negative 3x on my inside plus 2x on my outside gives me a negative x in the middle. And if I double check my last sign, negative times positive do give me negative. So I have factored that one, and I have factored it completely. So last factoring process is this guy here. Notice I do have a common factor, so let me take that out. Leaves me with an x squared plus 2x plus 4. And then notice I have a trinomial on the inside. So let me try and factor that as a trinomial. So if I have x times x, and factors of 4, I can use 2 times 2. But I cannot combine those in my outside-inside fashion to give me a 2x. So that doesn't work. Or I can use 4 times 1. But again, I cannot combine those in an outside-inside fashion to give me a 2x in the middle. So this doesn't factor as a trinomial. So the only thing I can factor it as is taking my common factor out. So I'm just going to copy that from here down to there. And that gives me 3 times x squared plus 2x plus 4. So I think I have factored everything completely. But it doesn't hurt just to double check and make sure that is officially done. Now I get to move to my cancel step. So I get to cancel any factors between the numerator and the denominator. So I have a x plus 2 I can cancel. I have this big parentheses here that I can cancel, x squared plus 2x plus 4, I can cancel that because it's all the same factor, and an x minus 2 over an x minus 2. So that leaves me with an x minus 3 in the numerator and a negative 3 in the denominator. So I have found my final answer. Now. You can rewrite this answer if you want to, but if you want to leave it like this, there's no issues with that. I just want to discuss it, so if you have a question about it, you know how it can work. This negative in the denominator of the fraction can be written anywhere. So I can write that negative in the middle of my fraction if I want, or I can write that negative in the top of my fraction if I want. But if you do it in the top, you cannot write it like I've done here. You must put parentheses around your x minus 3 because that negative really is going to all of those terms in the numerator. So you can just leave it like this, or if you want to put that negative in other places, that's fine. Just make sure you don't need to put those parentheses with it as well. So... With rational expressions so far, we've learned how to simplify them, how to multiply them, and how to divide them. And we basically found that it's all the same steps, just an extension from one process to the next.